Hello, my name is Carrie Diekman, and I'm a doctoral student in the Department of Counseling and Student Personnel at Minnesota State University, Mankato. For the last two years, I have worked in the Campus Women's Center, where I develop and implement various programs for the campus community. I am also involved with activi activism around LGBT rights, and I'm proud to be an ally. Will Lisa Jackson please join me at the podium? I am thrilled to meet and to be able to introduce Lisa Jackson because of her outstanding list of achievements and contributions she has made in protecting the environment, something in which I have a great interest in. Lisa is the Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA's administrator, appointed two years ago by President Barack Obama. She oversees a staff of 17,000 professionals as she leads the EPA efforts to protect the health and environment for all Americans. Some of the areas they currently focus on include a green economy and addressing the health threats that come from toxins and pollution. Additionally, she personally cares about protecting air and water quality, reducing greenhouse gases, and focusing on how environmental and health threats particularly threaten children, the elderly, and low-income communities. As a part of her job, she regularly speaks to Congress about the work of the EPA in environmental legislation. She chairs several task forces, such as the Task Force for the Chesapeake Bay, and almost a year after the BP oil spill in the Gulf Coast, the Gulf Coast Ecosystem Restoration Task Force, to make the Gulf's Gulf ecosystem stronger and more resilient than it was when the oil spill happened. She also sits on commissions, including National Oceans Commission and the Commission for the Great Lakes. Before becoming an EPA administrator, Jackson served as Chief of Staff to New Jersey Governor John S. Corzine and as a Commissioner of the State's Department of Environmental Protection. Before that, she worked for 16 years as an employee of the EPA. Lisa grew up in Louisiana, and she graduated from Tulane University. She went on to earn a master's degree in chemical engineering from Princeton University. Since becoming administrator, Jackson has received an honorary doctorate from Pace University. Lisa has received several other recognitions, including being named one of Essence Magazine's 40 Women Who Have Influenced the World, Newsweek's Most Important People in 2010, and Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People in the World in 2010. Lisa Jackson, not only do you consider the effects certain events have on our environment, but you also show great concern for the people and communities that are impacted, particularly those who might be affected most, including children, elderly persons, and people with low income. For this, I am very appreciative of your work and admire you for being courageous. It is with great respect and gratitude for your work that the National Conference of College Women Student Leaders, Organizers, and Attendees, including myself, honor and recognize you as a 2011 Woman of Distinction. Thank you, Carrie. That is um, really lovely and a long time to stand and listen about yourself, but <laughs> I'm going to trust that it was the right thing to do because trust is actually what I want to speak about uh, for just a few minutes. First, I just want to talk about uh, how much it means to me to be with this extraordinary panel of women and how fortunate you are because I, I'm learning a lot. So I know uh, congratulations on your choices because you're hearing uh, from women who have so much to say. So I have three messages, and I'm going to use little stories to try to bring them home, because I know you're getting tired of sitting there, just a little bit. So my first lesson is to trust in the tough choices that you make. 
Now that's carefully worded, tough choices, not the decision to make your hair purple that time when you were thinking it would be cool. Maybe that wasn't where you wanted to be the night before the big interview. Um, so I'm not saying that this is a justification for every choice that we make. We all make mistakes, as we heard earlier. But trust in the tough choices that you make. And the you is important because they come from you. They are yours. You own them. And so you have to trust in them. So I want to tell you one quick story um, about, about that. Um, you heard I grew up in Louisiana. I actually grew up in the ninth ward of New Orleans. And um, if you didn't grow up there, you now know about it from uh, uh, Hurricane Katrina, maybe when the levees broke, um, Spike Lee's amazing work, or uh, just watching the news. The ninth ward is where the levees broke, the lower nine. I grew up in the upper nine, so the water didn't come rushing in the way it did, just sweeping houses off the foundations. It actually just, you know, sort of seeped in, like in a bathtub, filled up and sat that way for about two weeks. So the home I grew up in um, was literally, if you've never seen a house that sits in water for two weeks, it's actually amazing. Water is an amazing force in nature. Uh, you have to respect it. But my mom's birthday is August 27th, and uh, I was home visiting her that August 27th, almost six years ago, um, because she was dealing with some health things. My brother was there. And I woke her up, uh, and I you know, drove her out of uh, New Orleans just for a day or two to go visit my brother in Shreveport, Louisiana. And she's never lived in Louisiana, in New Orleans since. And, almost certainly never will again. That's okay, because change is important. That's not the part about the trust yet. Um, now, um, after the hurricane happened, there was this period, remember, where we were all just trying to figure out what to do. You couldn't get into the city. You didn't want to go into the city. There was a horrible pictures of all the people who were literally suffering and dying in the streets, and all of us watched in horror what was happening in our country and in that great city and all along the Gulf Coast. But then there came this period afterwards of the great rebuild and all the questions around that. And I remember saying to my mom, you know, I've worked for the government pretty much my entire career or a nonprofit since I got out of Princeton. And I love public service, I truly do. But I remember saying to myself, Mom, what do you want to do? And she said, well, you know, I kind of want to move back into the house. I do, but I don't, but I do. She didn't carry flood insurance. So many people didn't. She surely should have. She was living in the whole, the whole city is almost a flood zone. And I remember thinking, it was right before John Corzine was elected governor. Um, I said, you know, I, if I had just taken my engineering degree, I was a very good student, had lots of great job offers, I would have been making the kind of money that would have allowed me to do the thing that so many people were doing for their mothers they, and, fa and fathers and family. They were going back home, knocking down the houses, hiring a contractor, and basically rebuilding a house. I, I don't have that kind of money. I have two kids, soon to be in college. I have bills and obligations, and I make good money, don't get me wrong, but I don't have that kind of money. And I remember having a real crisis about the choice I had made to do this thing called public service. Who was I to make that choice, not just for me, but for my mom as well? Well, fast forward, um, I was just home actually last weekend. and. Well, let me tell you one of the, so, so I would have built her a house, and I would have built her an energy efficient, beautiful home. I really would have, because I believe in that. I believe that's part of what we should be doing in this country, is using opportunities, even tragedies, to make ourselves resilient and strong. And I would have built her one that's handicapped accessible. She's in a wheelchair. I went home a few days ago, and my mom's house is knocked down. It's gone. It's just a slab. And that's because Wendell Pierce, who you all know from uh, um, The Wire, and Treme uh, grew up around the corner from me. He's also developing homes. And what kind of homes is he developing in New Orleans? He's developing energy efficient, handicapped accessible homes for the, resident of the residents of the neighborhood that we grew up in. He bought the plot um, and the land where my mom's house is and he's gonna do it. And the reason he's gonna do it is because the president that I worked for and the HUD secretary, the housing secretary, have given him a lot of money to go in and do that. And my point is that I, I totally feel connected to the choice I made to work in energy efficiency and on the environment, that somewhere the larger good of rebuilding and rebuilding in a way that's good and sustainable in that city is being served through my work. And I feel that my choice is validated. So trust the choice. Trust that you will not see the road that actually gets you there. You'll see, I mean, you're just starting. 
most of you, and you won't see all the twists and turns, but there will be those moments of near clarity, as someone said earlier, where you'll be able to see how your choice plays out in a much bigger scale. Second message, trust in the passion that you feel. And I'm sure you feel them. Sometimes you must feel lots of them. And you can't make sense of them. And you shouldn't be able to make sense of them necessarily right this second. My passion was to be a doctor. I wanted to be a doctor in the worst possible way. I love children. I have always loved children, except my own when they were really young. Um, and actually, probably now. Um, but you know, I've always I wanted to be a pediatrician. I went to college saying I was going to be a pediatrician. I was actually high school, and then I decided to try this thing called engineering. And I went to one of these summer programs because there were no women studying engineering, there were no African Americans studying engineering, I was really good in math and science, I loved it. And I remember thinking, uh-oh, but I really love people, I love being around people, and engineering to me, as with many sciences, has this impression of being this cold, sort of dispassionate profession where you take away all your feelings and you just make decisions based on logic. Well, as women, what we bring to the table is an ability to be passionate and not necessarily have to worry about explaining it. I really do believe that and I hope that doesn't sound too sexist, but I think it is our strength. It is my belief that the passions that you feel, if you can honor them and trust them, they will lead you to a place that's very good. During engineering school, I decided not to do pre-med. It was all about organic chemistry, honestly, um, because I did fine in it, but I just couldn't compete with those pre-med students who were killing everybody to make sure their experiment was perfect. So I said, that's not for me. Um, so I trust my passion. I do not think it is an accident that I today lead the Environmental Protection Agency. What is the mission of the Environmental Protection Agency? It is protection of human health and the environment. So I'm not a pediatrician, but I get to work on children's health issues every single day. So trust the thing you're passionate about. It will come back to you. Last trust message. Do not trust other people to do it for you. I don't know what it is, But if you're waiting for somebody else to do it, shame on you. Do not trust that that much of the road in the system is gonna work, and especially as women. Listen, one of the reasons you have to trust is that I guarantee you, you will have a moment sometime, it could come soon, it could come later, where someone will try to make you doubt a choice you've made, a passion you've had, a decision you want, a thing you think is right. And the only thing I ask is that at that moment, you remember two words, don't trust. Don't trust them to say they know what's good or bad for you. Make your mistake. Make it even if, if you really thought about it, make the mistake. That's not license to go out and mess around, but make the mistake if it's where you think you need to be. For me, what I get most passionate about is what is happening to our children and our bodies as women because of environmental pollution. Whether that's here, still dealing all these years later with mercury and smog pollution. I'm the mother of a child with asthma. I know what it's like to stay up at night and go to the hospital. I know the toll that takes mainly on women and caregivers who are women trying to have a career and also make sure that their children are taken care of. Or a recent study that showed that there are over 200 chemicals in the cord milk of 10 mothers. 200 synthetic chemicals that no one has tested that's our cord milk, because it's in our blood, because it's in our breast milk, because it's in our bodies. Don't trust someone else to figure that out for you, if that's what you're called to do, because nobody else is going to do it for us but us. Thank you, and best, best wishes.